Well, what a year 2022 has been in politics, both here and overseas. Joining me live to discuss everything from Anthony Albanese moving into the lodge to the chaos in British Parliament. From Bondi Partners, former minister in the Howard government, Peter McGoran, Happy New Year. Well, it is a happy new year because we're seeing the end of 2022, Tim. It's been quite a year, hasn't it? Extraordinary in politics. Let's start in Australia because a massive change with Anthony Albanese coming to power. Very much so. It wasn't totally unexpected because the Morrison government and Prime Minister Morrison himself were in trouble long before polling date. But the two big surprises, to me at least, have been the rise of the Teals federally. We're not sure that they can replicate it on a state level. In fact, they didn't, uh, spectacularly so, in Victoria. And secondly, what's happened since the election date where Prime Minister Albanese and his government have consolidated their hold on power, they've gone up so that their, their primary vote has even reached 40 per cent. So um, his performance since Election Day, where some people thought he was the accidental Prime Minister, has been quite outstanding on any measurement. He's been underestimated, hasn't he, Peter, by many, because he's always been a precise politician. Yes, you're, you're right, Tim. He's been underestimated. Um, but don't forget, he is a centre-left politician. We've seen that from his industrial relations laws that favour the, the unions very strongly, his intervention in the marketplace on energy pricing, and there's a long way on that yet to play out. But nonetheless, he is walking that fine line between catering to his base, which the Liberals often forget to do, as well as not frightening the horses, being measured, being common sense and not seeking to be anything other than the plain man in, in the lodge. In contrast, former Prime Minister Scott Morrison and his reputation in tatters after what happened with you know, him appointing himself in various ministries and everything that's happened since. Yeah, there's been a pile on. And the good things he did as Prime Minister, remember there was a period there through 2019 and the, the first few months of COVID in 2020, where he was um, as popular, if not more so, than the, the current Prime Minister. But in the end, he blew it. He became shrill. He became divisive. And he became all-consuming. So I'm afraid he wrote his own political epitaph. But I'm, I'm, I'm sad that his achievements in office, at least now, are being overshadowed by his obvious mistakes, such as taking on five secret ministries. Before we look back and, and see the fact that Daniel Andrews has come into power or will retain power in Victoria, uh, just looking ahead just slightly, what do you think about Dominic Perrottet's chances of retaining power in New South Wales? And uh, look, it would be one of the last bastions of the coalition. I don't rate his chances as as high, but I don't write him off. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to have a bet each way, Tim, although it sure sounds like it. Um, he's in there with a chance... Um, he himself personally is well regarded in New South Wales. Every poll may, uh, um, um, reveals that nobody's wanting to get rid of him as an individual, in, in contrast to uh, Morrison. Um, but they've been there 11 years. There's been disunity within their ranks. As a, as a political machine, the Liberal Party in New South Wales is, is, is inefficient to, factional law, warlords are ruling. There's a lot against him. He may yet pull it out, uh, pull a rabbit out, out of the hat, and Labor knows it. And, and structurally, uh, the Liberals have a nine-seat lead in New South Wales and by a considerable gap. So Labor's not taking this as a given. They are fighting to the very last day. Um, so it, it'll be a fascinating election to watch. Um, he'd be worth a good bet... Perite, uh, if, if you like good odds, but you're sure going to get good odds. Well, you and I both like good odds. We both like, uh, you know, punt with our head, not over it, obviously. But um, what, what about what about in Victoria? Because Dan Andrews, um, after all the the criticism throughout the COVID pandemic, he he sort of waltzed it back in, didn't he? Uh, yep, yeah, and to everyone's surprise. 
Even Labor, Tim, and, and I was talking to a lot of them before the election, they, they never expected to win 55 seats, which is basically what they held going into the election. They would have been happy with a bare majority of one of 46 seats that have taken that happily, or even minority government with independence. So it was a resounding victory. And he's such a polarising, divisive figure, and I think that's why political commentators and observers such as myself were beguiled into thinking he was in real trouble because you either hate him or you love him and there are a lot of haters about Daniel mm. Andrews so he's there are some warning signs for the Labor Party and for Daniel Andrews in the political makeup of Victoria they lost a lot of support in, in the West and the Northwest and their traditional seats a lot uh, but held the middle class and uh, of course the inner seats that were traditionally liberal so um, the the political landscape in Victoria has been completely altered and it's hard to predict where mm. we go from here other than the Labor Party is very secure for the next four years. I want, I want to ask you about two things before I let you go. Overseas, in the UK, we've had uh, turmoil in the British Parliament. We've seen the death of the Queen. Um, what happens in 2023? The UK economically, Tim, as, as you well know, is in deep trouble. It, it, it does seem to be a declining world power. Um, the national health system, for instance, is is creaking and is is in real trouble. So they are, and with very high inflation, energy issues which dwarf our own. Uh, so it's hard to be optimistic about the UK, although they're such a resilient. Uh, and innovative people, you, you can never write off the UK. Look, it depends if you're a half glass or half full sort of person. If you're a glass half full, you'll say, well, the, institu the democratic institutions in the UK worked, that the Conservative Party got rid of a completely hapless, uh, incompetent mm. prime minister in record time. If you're a half empty sort of person, you'll say that they're beset by incompetence and confusion. I'm, I'm, I'm relatively optimistic about the UK, politically and economically, but they've got a long road to hoe.